It's the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. Our guest this week, Tyrell Adams, inside linebacker. You've heard his name a lot in recent weeks. He is now starting for the Texans, number 50. Tyrell, I'm sure it's been a crazy, it's a cra- been a crazy season, but what yeah. have the last few weeks in particular been like for you? Um, they've been uh they've been up and down. Again, you know, we uh, won and we lost, lost a real close one. It's been up and down, a lot of emotions into it, but um it's been fun, kind of the journey, kind of just uh trying to prove myself, trying to um, prove myself out there on the field to the guys, to the coaches, uh, be a good teammate to those guys around me, just um, just kind of keeping the spirits up and everything. But it's been, it's been, it's been cool. It's been a lot of emotions for sure, but it's been cool. All right. Well, a lot of people outside of the organization were surprised at what you were able to do. Your teammates not. They've seen you around the building. They know what you've done at practice. But in your first two starts this season, you're already tied for first in the AFC and fourth in the NFL with 20 total tackles. So you kind of came out the gate hot. Uh, The first start at Jacksonville, you had the fumble recovery. Um, You know, you led the team with tackles. What sort of set you up for success just sort of stepping in? I know Bernardrick McKinney's shoes are big ones to fill for you, but, you know, what do you attribute the fact that it was a pretty easy transition for you? I think definitely just the guys around me, those guys in that room. Yeah, Dylan Cole. Zach Cunningham, Bernard McKinney, all those guys. It's just high effort, high energy. It's like high play type of guys. It's always trying to contribute. So just trying to keep up with those guys kind of influences me and encourages me to kind of be better no matter what I'm doing. When I'm thrown in there, those guys kind of, they give me uh, give me advice. They just give me uh, support as I go in there and then trying, trying to keep them, keep them excited about me and keep them encouraged. So keep their hopes alive with me. They kind of, like I said, like I said, they give me encouragement. So I'm just doing it for those guys that's right up beside me and those guys is counting on me. Well, you've been on the practice squad for the Texans. And when you look at your bio of the places you've been, it's like a paragraph of all the teams that you have spent time with over the course of your career. You're in year five, um, but you've played, let's say you've been with Seattle, yeah. Kansas City, the Raiders, the Bills, the Colts, Texans, 49ers, Texans again, and I'm pretty sure I left out a few like re-signing with the same yeah, team yeah, again. Yeah. So a lot of different teams that you've been with, that you've been cut with from what was sort of the momentum for you? Because I imagine that's, it's gotta be tough the first, second, third, but after a number of times, did you ever sort of lose hope or what, what kept you going that, you know, you wanted to establish yourself in the NFL? I think, I think the biggest thing is it definitely can be like emotionally, um, uh, stressing for sure but just having my family around me kind of um my big brother he's a he's a big influence in my life he always kind of reminds me just I'm built for this kind of just and I just look back on my life even before NFL kind of the things I went through in my career in football in college and in high school just I've always kind of been bouncing back and forth trying to establish myself and just kind of just waving those those obstacles obstacles and um, those challenges, and every time I look back on those those things, I kind of remind myself that you can do this, overcome anything that's kind of thrown your way. So it's just constant support from my family again, and just uh, always remind myself you can do it. Again, it's a blessing to kind of be in this position, and I'm blessed to be where I'm at. I wouldn't change the journey for nothing, for sure. But again, my family just always in my corner, uh, encouraging me, reminding me of just like the things I can accomplish and reminding me of the things I've accomplished so far. So that kind of keeps me encouraged to keep working and just keep striving and just let the chips fall as they may and taking the best of, uh, taking advantage of the best of my opportunities. So. Well, you went to West Georgia and you majored in accounting. Yep. Did you ever think, you know what? I might have to, if the football thing doesn't work out, I might have to go back and be an accountant or something. No, the Did you ever think what was going to happen if football didn't work out for you? I was in an interview at Northwestern Mutual for a salesman's job when I got the call from like one of the, um, scouts one of the nfl scout about they wanted to come see me work out for a few teams and literally as i'm walking out of the interview because i got the job for the for the uh the rep job and then as i'm walking out of the interview out of the interview i get a call from a random number and they're like hey we want you to come perform for these couple of teams blah blah and i'm literally like oh my god i might got a chance so and they kind of was just um it just kind of just rolled from there so I love that. So you had a job offer in hand yes. as a sales rep for Northwestern Mutual. Yep. And you get a call on the other hand that NFL teams are calling you to try out. Exactly. So how happy would you have been if like you never got the NFL call, but you had taken the job? Do you think you would have looked back and thought, I wish it would have gone through? Would you 
have not looked back. You seem like such a happy-go-lucky guy. I feel like it, maybe you would have been it's like – It's crazy because I love football so much. So literally in that interview, I'm like kind of like watching like – because I'm inside the office. I'm watching all the people around kind of like what they're doing. I'm seeing all these cubicles. And I'm literally slowly and steadily like accepting like – it's over with. The fun life is over with. Just the uplift. Because I'm a, I'm a people's person. I like to be in like live environments. I'm just like, that's just me. I'm a social butterfly. So it was just, it wasn't socially. The sales <laughs> so, job wasn't going to be social enough for you? What were you going to do? Exactly. So I was, I was literally there and I was going through my head like, I guess it's all over. And then I get that call and literally. And that was the begin. That was the end of the sales career for now. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, maybe way, 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 way later in the future. All right, so you've had all these journeys with different teams. You actually played against the Texans before because, of course, when you play for that many teams, it's only a matter of time before yeah. you see a team that you're going to end up with. Um, what do you remember? You, I, I want to say it was uh, 2016, the, the, the playoff game, right? Yeah, and I remember. You, um, I just remember coming here. It was my first playoff game. Again, it was my first year I actually got active to play. So it was uh, my first playoff game playing, and I was with the Raiders. We lost, but Derek Carr had was out for the season that exactly, year. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And then we just got beat. I went back home, and literally a year later, I was here in Houston. You you were you've been here a couple of times. Um, yeah. You've been here, and then you know you blocked a punt uh, in 2018. You got cut, but the Texans brought you back again last year. You were on the practice practice squad, right? And then. Yeah. Yep. In, um you, you started the last two games of the year. Bernard McKinney was out. You had a forced fumble in that game against Tampa Bay. So what's it like when you make a big play in a game? Do you feel like, okay, this is the thing that's going to help me latch onto a team? Because you've had big plays in the past. And, you know, for whatever reason, teams have had to part ways with you. But how do you remain hopeful that what you're doing on the field is enough to help you stay with that team? Uh, I, I, I've kind of been around it a while now. Again, going into my fifth year. I've been around a lot a while now to kind of understand the business side of it. So I kind of try not to let that um, beat me too much. I kind of stay true to once I make those plays, encouraging myself. So again, just reminding myself, you can do this, you can do this. And those are just subtle reminders that you're where you're supposed to be at. So just keep working and keep chopping at the wood and eventually the tree will come down, but you got to stay persistent. So that's kind of like the thing for me is just staying persistent at it. Well, I talked to Whitney Merciless uh, recently and he said that they were also happy for you, the linebackers group. And I know that they joke around with you a lot. Um, B-Scar TV, you, you've been on a couple yeah. of times. Your name seems to come up. And I thought, this guy, they're always talking about him. And I have heard from several players, you're probably one of the funniest players on the team. So tell me about uh, what, you know, maybe what fans don't really know about you, what you're like, maybe off. All right, what about me? Oh, it's so much. I There's love so much movies. to tell. Okay, I ahead. love movies. I love cartoons. I'm very... I love cartoons. SpongeBob and and uh, the Amazing World of Gumball are probably my favorite two cartoon <laughs> shows right, right now. Uh, but I just like being down to earth, um, being goofy. I like to keep my youth about myself. I have a daughter, so we're always goofing around, yeah. making jokes. Like I just I just really pride myself of just being down to earth and not being too uptight about things because life is stressful enough in and itself. So I try to make the most and the fun of it of anything I'm and I'm, I'm involved in. You seem like a fun dad because you you do have a very lighthearted. Yeah, sentence. yeah. So, but the thing about being a fun dad is it's you hard gotta, to take you serious. That's true. I was gonna say, <laughs> how do you do that? Exactly. So it's like a it's my Achilles heel, Achilles heel <laughs> in a parent. So you're like I haven't quite figured out how to be the strict dad, but I definitely exactly am the fun dad. Exactly. All right. So your practice, your preparation, your camaraderie with the teammates. How much has that helped you this year in having to step up? And take BMAC's place because being on the practice squad, I imagine you guys get a lot of work in yeah. um, at, at scout team. Obviously, you've helped out on special teams uh, all this time too. But how much has just being on the practice squad really prepared you for this moment? I just think just being around the guys for so long, we kind of built this um, in the culture here, just like hardworking guys, uh, lunch pill and hard hat type of guys around here. So being around those guys again, like Dylan Cole, uh, the guys up front, Dunny. Um, Carlos, those those being around those guys, just seeing how they carry themselves, and they they're they're very down to earth guys, goofy as well, but they also make sure they handle their business, like taking care of their business on the field. So, um, being around those guys is kind of like cultivating me to kind of be that same way. A part of being just goofy, just make sure you handle your business on the field, so they can can trust me when I'm out there and and um, 
be be confident in who, who who they have behind them or, or the safeties who they have in front of them. So. All right, well, we've definitely taken notice. Tyrell Adams, number 50 out on the field, um, making a name for himself this year in 2020. Tyrell, best of luck for the rest of the season. And you know what? I'm really glad that you did not take that job at Northwestern Eagle. <laughs> oh, definitely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. Thanks, Tyrell. I no problem. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.